everybody, and welcome to the Friday Show. My name is Mr. Miles, and today I'm joined by... Okay, so I got nobody with me here in the studio. However, at home, give us a wave, everybody at home. My first period class is here with us. They're going to be asking me some questions. They are con they're starting a segment where they will be conducting interviews with teachers or staff or personnel that we can get to come upstairs here to the South Seminole Lounge. We thought we'd test it out with me today. Actually, we really tested it last week with Dr. Griffin. We had a very successful sit-down interview with him. You can find that on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash South Seminole News. And it's at two different locations. It's on the most recent The Friday Afternoon Show, which was an hour and 15-minute long show with many, many different things. Dr. Griffin's interview was on there. Amelia from First Period debuted a music video. Uh, Chani from one of my other classes conducted a podcast audio interview, plus two episodes of the dean's den we had a lot going on that past friday but you can see dr griffin's interview there plus you can also find it on youtube all by itself in a segment called 40 years 10 questions and that's also on our youtube page but today i was asking first period class to just let me get comfortable they're going to ask me 10 questions not 10 questions they're going to ask me questions each one of them gets a chance to ask a question don't know ahead of time what the questions are. And maybe when we get other teachers up here, we'll do the exact same thing. We don't know what they're going to ask. They're just going to start asking us questions. And I'm just going to go down my list and have everybody from first period ask a question for the Friday show. First up we have is Grace. Grace, do you have a question for me today? What made you want to leave Fox 35 and come to South Seminole News? Oh, okay. A question about Fox 35. Um, I was at Fox 35 for uh 15 years and during that last year that uh i was there the whole year before um i heard from my daughter at the time who's in high school now reese that over the summer they had heard that their tv production teacher was moving away so she wasn't sure what was going to happen with the tv program so i said well i my work schedule works out in a way that i could come to school with you every morning before i go to fox and help you record the news. And they didn't really have a lot of equipment. They had a camera and the green screen, and it kind of connected to the whole school, and they did the news that way. They, they didn't have very much uh, technology then. So I would record the news with them, and then I would take that video to me with me to work, and I would kind of edit it together, and then we would put it up on YouTube, and then they would put it up on Facebook, and that's kind of how it started. So I came to school here every day, for a full school year and every day as I finished I would go to go to work that day. So every day I was going and going and going and it just I was really having a lot of fun here as I would come to school every day and put the news together and and eventually they had a teacher come in uh, at the near the beginning of the school year because at first they didn't even have a teacher. I was just there helping out for an hour every day and uh, the school year finished and Dr. Coleman, our principal here, and I discussed maybe putting a proposal together on how to build a TV news program. And it kind of went from there. Uh, so I had told the people at Fox 35 that um, I've been offered a job at the school and it's a wonderful opportunity and it's gonna give me a chance to take all my knowledge from, from Fox 35 and build a TV studio, Dr. Coleman gave me two two empty classrooms here and uh, fox 35 was very generous they had a set that they were throwing away and it was going to just thrown in the garbage so i thought well maybe we can bring this to the school and we would use it and it's the set that we see here and there's a lot more to that story but to go back to your original question why did i leave i had been there for many many years and you know you work late nights when you work in television if you're working the evening shows you know 10 11 o'clock at night the news gets over you get home late at night and i had this opportunity this, this great opportunity from dr coleman to come work here have better hours be with my family spend more time with my family and even be with some of my family members right here on campus so that was the reason why i decided to leave fox 35 i love working at fox 35 and the uh i still am in close contact with everybody that works there. Some of them have actually been here and sat at the news anchor desks for some episodes of the news that we've done over the years. One, two, three, we've had four different anchors show up here and do the news with us over the years. And uh, it's just, I have a, one, there's a wonderful community of reporters and TV anchors there. And I still like to continue that relationship with them 
and I hope to see them again in the future sometime. So those are the reasons why I had left Fox 35, and I was very happy because the decision was wonderful. It's great being here and building this TV program that we did. Thank you, Grace, for your question. My next question comes from Chloe Fisher. Chloe, do you have a question for me today? In the recording studio, you have a picture of every student at South Seminole who has ever been on the news. What inspired you to do that? Oh, okay. She's talking about the legacy wall. So if you ever come and tour the school here and you come to our classroom, when you walk into the studio, you'll see what's known, I call it, as the legacy wall. If you've ever anchored the news, like Chloe said, your picture goes up on the wall. Not that long ago, I went to, I was, when my youngest daughter, Riley, went to Washington, D.C., uh, we went to the news museum called the Museum. And it's a, it's a, it was like a three or four story building that just tells you all about the, the history of news. And you would walk up and down the walls and you would see all of the history of the news back from the early days of television and all the major events that have happened throughout history that were televised. And it was neat to walk around the hallways and see the history. Well, we've got a history of our own here. I mean, this school was built in 1963. We have a great rich history here. And as we began this new program, I wanted to continue showing off our history. So I wanted to make sure that everybody who was ever on the news was up on the walls. As people walk through, we get tours a lot that come through here. As they come and tour the school and they come to tour our classroom, they'll see the history of all of the students who have ever anchored the news since we started the South Seminole News Program three years, well, four years ago, the year that I was uh, a volunteer here. We also saved those pictures and hung them up on the wall. So I thought it was a great way to remind everybody that we have a great history here and we've built a great program. Also, I had a lot of blank wall space and it was kind of weird. So it's like, let's put some, something up on these walls. So I did. Thank you, Chloe. That's a very good question. Once again, teachers that come in here and sit here for these interviews, we don't know the questions ahead of time. So you cannot prepare. You never know what they're going to ask. Next up, we have a question from Colin. Colin, do you have a question for us for the South Seminole Lounge podcast teacher interview edition of the Friday show? If you weren't doing the news, what job would you have? Um, if I wasn't doing the news, you know, again, maybe I'd be working back at Fox 35, but I always loved um, working in television or producing or writing. I got to do a little bit of writing and producing while I was also at Fox 35. That was fun to do, plus editing. There were a couple of projects where I also got to do some on-air stuff. It was fun to do some on-air work. So I could see doing something like that as well. I always wanted to have my own talk show where I'd sit and interview people. We're, we're almost sort of doing that now, except it looks like I'm talking to myself, which is not weird at all, is it? But I could see myself wanting to be a talk show host. I've always wanted to do something like that. Ooh, or a professional tennis player. Can I count that as well? I also wanted to be a tennis player. Okay, professional tennis player. Thank you, Colin. I like that question. Next up, we have a question from Amelia. Amelia, do you have a question for us? Uh, my question was very similar to Colin's. Oh. It was, <laughs> when you were our age, what types of career paths did you envision yourself going down in the future? And did they relate in some way to your current affiliation? Okay, very good. Yes, when I was when I was your age, or a little bit after your age, you know, I was I was living down in South Florida, and the news came out that Disney World was going to be building a TV and film studio here. They called it MGM Studios. It's now called Hollywood Studios. But at the time, you know, when you live in Florida and it's like, oh, California and Hollywood, it's so far away. And then it's like, wait a second, we're going to build our own Hollywood right here in Central Florida. So I, I, when I was your age, I started planning like, oh, I want to, I want to go to school. I want to, I want to graduate from a college that's over up in that area. I didn't even know about UCF back then, but the University of Central Florida was there, plus you know Disney World and TV studios and film. So yeah, I kind of always knew I wanted to do something like that in that field. I did eventually end up doing stuff in television and shooting videos and producing and stuff. But yeah, that was definitely one of my plans when I was your age was to do something like that. And uh, and it kind of worked. I came here, I went to UCF, I got to do work in television and production, and then it led me all to working right here at South Seminole Academy. So it worked out perfectly. Thank you, Amelia, I like that question. 
Our next question is from Chloe Lee. Chloe, do you have a question for me? What inspired you to make a podcast room? Oh, okay. This is a good one. So I have a, I do a podcast. I do a couple of podcasts. Who doesn't? Everybody's got a podcast, right? Everybody's got one or two podcasts laying around that they do on the weekends. <clears throat> I have a podcast that I do. Five years ago, I met somebody who was building his own comic book shop. And the comic book shop is down on iDrive. It's called Gods and Monsters. And I met him. His name is Todd. Very, very wonderful guy. And I said, you know what? When you build your store, it would be so cool to start a permanent podcast there so that every week we could come in, we could talk to customers, or they could show us things that they bought or things that they're selling. And I really got into enjoying doing weekly podcasts. And it seems like no matter what field you're in, whether you're at a school or a comic book shop or you love a theme park, uh, there's always a way to incorporate a podcast into it. So after my first two years here, um, one day la last year, uh, I found out that every teacher has like a planning period and I had fifth period plan, but they needed to use my classroom for fifth period plan for the yearbook because the yearbook staff will use the same computers that we use. So I kind of didn't have my classroom during fifth period for my plan. So I came into the podcast room here, which was nothing but bookshelves and just old stuff that had collected for 20, some 20 or maybe 30 years of stuff that had collected in here. It was just a closet full of bookshelves. And I said, you know what? This is the perfect size for building a podcast studio. So it kind of came from that. If I didn't have the yearbook class come in here last year, I probably wouldn't have thought of it. A lot of times I'd come into the closet here and kind of look around. I used to charge the cameras in here or keep equipment in here, but it was still kind of a huge mess. So I thought this room is the perfect size for building a podcast studio. And it'll give us students another opportunity if they're not comfortable sitting at the anchor desk, they're not comfortable standing at anchor three and doing the news, maybe we can find a way to have them be a little bit more comfortable in a comfortable setting because I have so many kids that are interested. Oh, I wanna be on the news or I wanna do something. So I thought, let's incorporate something else. So kind of two things happened. It was the interest from students to wanting to do things, plus the fact that I had this big empty closet that had just bookshelves. You can't see it right now, but I have bookshelves over there. I, I left a couple of them, but the bookshelves almost went all the way around and it was just collecting stuff over the years that would just get sent in here. So we took, I took everything out. Every time I would have a fifth period, I would start to take it apart and move it out to the dumpster. And then once I cleared it out, I, I got carpeting from Miss Mafoos, got me carpeting. And then Dr. Coleman helped me to buy some of the padding and we just kind of built it from there. But yeah, the reason was, is that student interest was the main reason why I built the podcast studio. That was a very good question. Haley? Oh, yes. What was your, um, what's your favorite memory from working as a Miss Oh, favorite memory from working at in news at Fox 35? Ooh, see, that's a good one now. See, once again, we didn't get the questions ahead of time, so I got to think about that because there were so many things that happened over the years. I mean, some shocking things and some, you know, news events that happened. I was working at Fox 35 during September 11th, but I'm trying to think of something something big and exciting that happened. Uh, oh, I, I do remember, well, oh my gosh, there's so many things. There was the one event that was pretty cool because I was at work and we were editing and putting stuff together. And when Harry Potter ride, when the Harry Potter park came out at Universal, you know, there were events that were going to go on that we didn't know about. So we had all these cameras there at the event. And I'm a big fan of John Williams. John Williams does all the music for Harry Potter, for Star Wars, for Indiana Jones. Superman, E.T., I mean, you can name all the movies. And John Williams appeared, and his orchestra was there to perform the music from Harry Potter. And everybody in the audience had these wands, and it was dark out, and everybody was had their wands waving around, and we had the cameras there, and we were kind of watching it at work as it was happening. And there was John Williams. He came out, and he was conducting, and that was just the, cool, the coolest moment that he was a part of that. I don't remember if you guys were, were you guys alive when the Harry Potter Park 
uh, debuted. I can't remember how far back ago that was, if you would have remembered that when the park opened up. But that was a really big event. There were many, many events over the years at Fox 35. Um, we would have people come into the studio and they would sit down and do interviews. Uh, famous people would come in. But uh, I, I, I'm, I, gotta, I wanna think more about your question. I feel like I have a better answer for you, but I'm gonna keep going with the rest of the interview while I think of other things that happened. The space shuttle program was a big thing as the shuttles would take off and land here when we still had the shuttle program. Um, I, I know I'm forgetting something big that happened that, uh, that happened at the station. I gotta think about that, but there are so many great memories from working there. Uh, okay, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come back. I, I feel like I have a better answer for that one too. Our next question comes from Jenna. Jenna, do you have a question for me? When you were growing up, who was your idol or inspiration? Oh, okay. Again, one of the things I always wanted to do was have my own talk show, where I would sit down and interview people. And then there was even a time uh, for a short time where I had my own show for like, it ran for a couple of months here locally, but I was always a huge fan of David Letterman. David Letterman used to have the nighttime time slot that uh, Stephen Colbert has now. He has that time slot at CBS. So David Letterman uh, was a huge influence. I was always a big fan of his. Growing up in the 80s and the 90s, he had his own show. He would always do goofy things. And uh, he was a talk show host, but he was kind of the opposite of a talk show host where he would do kind of goofy, non-talk show host type things that I love. But I would definitely say it was David Letterman. Sadly, I think you guys have to Google because you don't know who that is. And that makes me very sad. But thank you for asking me the question. Anyway, Jenna, it was David Letterman. It still is David Letterman. Now, he doesn't have his show anymore on CBS, The Late Night Show. He has a Netflix show where he does one-on-one -on -one interviews with people. Last year, and it's on Netflix, he did interviews with Malala. She, he did interviews with uh, former President Obama, and he has different celebrities on where he just does sit-down interviews, kind of like what we're doing right now. So I, I'm still inspired by him. Thank you, Jenna. I like that question. Next question is from Riley. Riley, do you have a question for us here? Yes, my question was, how has your classroom affected the school besides giving them a better news? How is my classroom? Ex uh, okay. How has it affected the school? I think that the biggest thing is, and this is probably true for every school, but I can definitely say this 100% about our school. It is a fantastic, wonderful, amazing school. And there are so many times going through life and going through school and going through your daily activities that you don't realize how great like a school like this is. So this program, we get an opportunity to put a camera and shine a light on some amazing things here, amazing teachers, the school programs that we offer. Uh, the J I, I could start naming things that, I, that are just amazing here. The JROTC program, uh, the band, the chorus, the dance, the sports programs. We get to shine a light on something that's amazing here. The teachers here, uh, the teachers that create escape rooms, uh, you know, the teachers that have programs that, that just keep kids interested and excited about school. Um, the after school programs, uh, you know, the sports, we have basketball and volleyball and cross country, things that we can record here. So what we get to do is shine a light and show everybody, hey, look, I bet you didn't know this was going on here. One of my greatest memories was two years ago when JROTC was in the competition and I spent the day, the competition was at, uh, I wanna say it was at Oviedo High School that year. It was on a Saturday and the JROTC was in the competition and Chief Jackson at the time was here running the program, says, you know, we've been training really hard. We've been working really hard for this. So I spent the whole day with them. And man, that program, which that that episode of JROTC in 2018, I think, is up on our YouTube page, where they just dominated in every program, in every category, and they won all the awards and the overall trophies. And Chief Jackson was very emotional and how proud he was with the kids holding up the trophy. And he got a little teary eyed and I was there with the cameras and it gave me an opportunity to shine a light on him and his program and show everybody how this school is amazing. 
And this is just one small example of it here with this one video I shot today. I've got so many examples of that on our YouTube page. So it gives me a chance to really show off what an awesome school this is. And for those people that are watching on Facebook or YouTube, click on that button. They'll be like, wow, I didn't know that about that school. That's what this program is here to do. It's here to shine a light on this wonderful school. Thank you, Riley. That was a great question. I like that. Uh, next question is from Nadia. Nadia, do you have a question for us today in the lounge? What was your most difficult year at South Seminole and why? What was my most difficult year at South Seminole? Ooh, boy. Probably, I'd probably just say my first year because not only was it my first year here at South Seminole, I came from a TV background. It was my first year as a school teacher. So it was very challenging that first year. The program was new. I was new, you know, getting used to a lot of things. It gave me an opportunity to see, wow, there are some amazing teachers around me and I get to learn a lot from them. That first year was challenging because we were building the program as we were building the first school year for me. So I would definitely say, and then each year has just gotten better and better. This year, even though we're dealing with this and everything that's going on, we've still had the opportunity to build something like this and still talk to you guys. So I wouldn't even say this year, was as challenging as my first year because my first year it was all new to me and i was used to being at a tv station all day with adults and doing adult work and then suddenly it's like oh i'm with all these great kids all day this is different and i got to get used to doing this and and making sure to do everything the way that i see all these other teachers doing I and mean, they're amazing amazing people and it's like i want to be like these teachers so it was definitely a challenge in my first year compared to any other year and every year just keeps getting better and better and thank you nadia i like that question now we'll scroll on back to rj rj do you have a question for me here was any of your family members a veteran if they were, were they in the Army, Coast Guard, Navy, or Air Force? Okay, very good. I have to go back a little ways. Both of my grandfathers, that would be uh, Grandfather Stockdale, which is my middle name, uh, and Grandfather Miles were both in the military, and they were both in the Army. Um, and that was, gosh, that was during World War II, actually. So I don't have any current family members that are in the military. I have two sisters and they're both in actually in the, in the teaching business. And, uh, and then there's myself and then that's all I have. So yeah, my, I would hear stories from both my grandfathers about being in the war. They didn't talk too much about it, but one of my grandfathers, grandfather Stockdale was a journalist. So he had, did have some stories about being a journalist in the military, but I didn't have too many other stories like that. But I like that you, you asked that question because uh, family members now, people in the, who have family members who are in the military, there's so many of them now. And uh, I, it's just, it's been a long time since I got a chance to talk to them. You know, they passed away many years ago, but they would tell us stories about being in the military uh, back in World War II. But thank you for that, for that question. So thank you for your question, RJ. And that's it for our questions. This is going to be a new segment we have on the show. We started it with Dr. Griffin last week, where we asked questions from the kids online virtually uh, from Seminole Connect. And uh, next time, hopefully on the South Seminole Lounge, we'll have a new guest. Maybe I'll get to sit over there and the real guest will sit here. I don't feel like I was a real guest. I feel like I was just like a test guest as we try to get this fleshed out and working. I think it worked great. Thank you guys very much for your questions today. Tune in next week on the Friday show, and we will continue with our teacher interviews. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Oh, let's wave at home. Everybody at home, wave. Thanks for asking questions today. Thank you guys very much. Okay, now I'll sign off. Okay, thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.